Hey Floss Soup friends, happy Flossmas. Today is Sunday, December 3rd, 2023. This is Lana from Silly Notion Stitcher. Um, thanks for tuning into my channel and you can see I'm still a little bit in my Sunday finest. Um, soon getting ready to go out to brunch, a um, family brunch that we will be doing, um, sort of an annual thing that we do, so that will be great. And um, we are still in the middle of the Jingle Ball. So yesterday I um, participated in a few classes. I was in the Beth Twist um, pin class and um, of Heartstring Samplery. So I have those to show. Um, and I also was in a really great class last evening um, with Kathy Haberman and her husband, um, with hands-on design and it was for finishing a mattress uh, style pin cushion. So I had no idea that Kathy had designed a whole series of these blocks, um, she calls it her block series, that started off I think like in 20 14 or 2012 or something and so there's quite a lot of those patterns out there and so I will be going down a little bit of a, a rabbit hole with that um, really interesting way to sew together stitched um, squares and rectangle re rectangle to make a block pin cushion um, instead of um, a pillow finish but it's all based on her design so and you can also of course not do the mattress finish if you want to still do her design and um, finish it in you know a normal flat finish type of way so she had lots and lots of information for us her class was scheduled for two hours I think she spent definitely three hours if not a little bit longer with us so it was um, a really nice time with her so I'm going to show you um, these are the pins that I made um, from Beth Twist's class okay so the penguin is really the um, focal point <laughs> So I purchased her kit option and received all these supplies and she talks about that these are Peruvian beads. Um, so the penguin and that really dark cylinder one is a Peruvian bead. Um, so I will be checking those out and the cork is actually a technique um, of drying overnight so we glued everything and then set it overnight so that gravity keeps the beads the weight of the beads to the top where you want them glued otherwise she said she has set them more overnight like in a pin cushion and came back to them with beads sort of slipped um, midway down the the post she uses um, recommends bank pins they're called and um, they just toppled across the room but they're still together <laughs> and she recommends this type of glue um, and it has a really nice um, fine tip to it so that was a great class and lots of fun so for my final finish for today's Flossmas episode, if I can pull this out and not create a disaster. So this is a finish from my first year, 2020, when I started um, cross-stitching and realizing all the cute finishing um, options out there. I pulled this motif from either a chart I had or a freebie. I think it was a freebie. Um, <coughs> it was the Brenda Gervais um, pattern from 2020 that was free. And I stitched this on um, a Lori Holt fabric that is, 
I forget what size what size she calls this, but it's, um, is it an Ada? Yeah, it's an Ada that I got from Fat Quarter Shop. And, um, yeah, I did wrap it around circle pieces. I didn't quite, I don't think I did the typical, more correct way of a running stitch to pull it nice and tight around the circle, but not too shabby. Um, but I definitely wanted something displayed for the season. And this, um, joy, um, frame was, um, on clearance. I'm pretty sure I got it from Michael's, but I think we see many of, you know, these joy type shapes and thankfully a really nice area to display in the circle. So that's my finish for today. Um, I said that I was doing Flossmas and wanted to share gifts um, that I've received throughout my retreats this past year and looking in my sewing box for what's the next thing I can show you. Um, this quite won't fit in there, but at Stitch New England in October at that retreat, there were many trunk shows, which was really awesome. And this was from Summer House Stitch Works, and it is a design from 2014. You get all of those little Nordic style charts are in this. It's a folder style that you open. And one of our table mates was just so kind to, um, she put together these little um, gift bags for us. Um, they had enough of these different charts in there of different styles that she put together a little kit um, of a different chart and then the charms that I showed, I think, the first day of Flossmas. So this is the one that I picked. This is what was in my bag. And I really like this. Um, when I look at this, it's a little primitive or darker colors for my taste. So I would probably liven it up a little bit. And it's probably a little bit of the picture. I haven't bothered pulling the flosses. Um, so the DMC is 420 and also apple cider is used. So I would probably bump up the red a little bit or use like um, cherry cobbler or something. Um, so very sweet and um, I do love Nordic designs right now like that one. And sort of like this idea of you know, things that are put into shapes like Christmas trees or um, sweaters. Um, and I think that JB Designs, in some of her ornaments, she has done that. So I will be checking that out again. Um, so I do have another special guest today. And this is my lovely pilgrim caroler. She was found, I used to work at QVC, and when I actually discovered, um, and sort of a friend of mine there, co-worker, got me back into checking out Carolers, and we went to Buyer's Choice, um, I think we went there like around 2016 or something like that, um, which was just incredible to see. You walk through this lovely display of these little towns and whatever, and they're just filled with carolers. Um, so it really makes you caught up by the time that you wind through there and land in the gift shop. But um, I was able to get her with my employee discount. And when I discovered that, I was like, okay, what other carolers do we still stock here? So there must have been an agreement at some point to sell um, 
these through QVC. This is so interesting. I feel like when I touch this, it's like interfacing. Um, I don't know if that's what it is, but it, it feels like sew-in interfacing. And I just wanted to show up close that this is really definitely looks like a linen. So she comes out before the whole gang. Um, I do put her out for Thanksgiving with other pilgrims and Indians we have. And then I keep her out as the whole gang comes together and um, gets set up. So um, there you go. That's my special guest for today. And as the finale, I will show that I did work a bit more on We Santa last night. I got the bird on his shoulder completed. I got his hand and his cuff completed. Not without some frogging complete surprise to me that that was happening but I was listening to Jingle Ball with a headphone with a wire and I think my thread was getting caught up in that and I didn't know and it was creating this big knotted mess on the back that I had to stop and fix but this is what I have done and the red, um, I did not use the called for. Um, I pulled out a Cosmo red from a floss pack that I just received from some Black Friday shopping. This is the Cosmo red, 800. And I think that's pretty true, actually. So this is the Wee Santa 2022. Lots of fun to stitch. I just love that pink color. It is Classic Color Works um, Sea Shelly. And this is definitely an Atomic Ranch Lugana. That's fairly close. Yeah, you can see some of the gradual, gentle modeling on that. I don't remember if it's Dune. I know that I have a piece of Dune and I have a piece of Palomino, and this might be the Palomino. So, so there you go. That's today's Flossmas episode. Um, Thanks for tuning in, and I look forward to your comments. Please like and subscribe if you're enjoying this series. So thank you so much, and have a great Sunday. Bye, everybody.